Greetings, it's Doc Ock coming at you live and direct from Black Facts Headquarters Central this evening with another installment of Doc Ock at noon and nine, bringing you the latest in time, on time, around time. Tonight, we'll be featuring uh, further adventures with Mary Ellen Pleasant. Mary Ellen Pleasant, otherwise known as Mammy Pleasant. Ah, and I have a special treat for you tonight. Yes. I may just do a little reading out of this book over here. But if not, I got something else I'm going to do. And I haven't quite decided which one I'm going to do yet. But in the meanwhile, let's go ahead and get everything set up so we can go ahead and get started. Number one, if you haven't already, go ahead and give us a like if you're watching on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. Last but not least, make sure to subscribe to the Black Facts, Tubular Black Facts channel on YouTube. Make sure if you to do that. All right, now let's see what we got for a uh, proverb for today. Oops. Let's see what I got here. Proverb for today. Oh, okay. Here we go here. Nigerian proverb for today. A wealthy man will always have followers. A wealthy man will always have followers. And that is a Nigerian proverb. Now, um, we've been reading about Mary Ellen Pleasant. And um, so you, 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 by now, if you've been paying attention, if you've been watching regularly, you should already have an idea of who Mary Ellen Pleasant is, why, we're featuring her this week uh, during the last week of Juneteenth month, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm thinking maybe tonight I give you a little special treat and just do a um, freestyle, freestyle on Mary Ellen Pleasant. So let's see what I can do to freestyle on Mary Ellen Pleasant. See if I still got it. And here we go. On with the show. On with the show. The show must go on. Juneteenth, Freedom Day. We celebrated this year in a whole different way. Because from here on in, Juneteenth Day, June 19th, every single year, will be considered a federal holiday in the USA. Can you imagine that? It's very hard for me. But on this day, what is it that we want to do? Who is it that we want to remember? Well, we have all kinds of people and all kinds of things that they did that we want to remember. Starting with Queen Calafia, Queen Calafia, Queen of the West, Queen of a nation where women rule and men drool. Queen Calafia, where in a, rules in a land where there's only one mineral in the earth, pure D gold. Yes. And what do we call her land today? California IA. Absolutely. California IA, the golden state. And how did it get its reputation? Because they found so much gold there. When did all this take place? Well, it took place in 1849. That's when they made the big find on the land of William Alexander Leidesdorf. Yes, his name sounds Dutch only because it is. 
because his mother was enslaved, an enslaved African on one of the small islands of the Caribbean. But her son was a ship captain who came to the West, to the land of Queen Calafia, California IA. Now, what does all this have to do with the man John Brown? Well, a whole lot. Because John Brown needed funds and support, he needed people who believed in his truth. Yes, because he came speaking the truth. And some people think that truth may be anti-American. But can you blame the truth? No, you can't blame the truth. You must blame yourselves for not appreciating the truth. Queen Calafia, Queen of the West, warrior queen, stood by herself, didn't need no man because she had the strength of arms. And if you got in the way, She'd have to do you some harm. But if you met her, if you met with her and brought her some pleasure, you'd experience nothing but her absolute charm. And Mary Ellen Pleasant came to California, IA, the land of the West, the Golden State, with that very same kind of charm. But you best watch out, for Mary had all kinds of charms. So many, they even started to call her the voodoo woman. Yes, you got to watch out for Mary Ellen Pleasant, the voodoo women, woman, because she might cast a spell on you that would free your slaves from all that cotton picking and pancake making by someone like John Brown. John Brown, who came with fire and a flame, just like the angels in the Bible, Mikael and Gabriel, Raphael, and there's one other who I always forget, Mary Ellen Pleasant. Doesn't she look lovely? Isn't she lovely? Yes, she is. But there's more to Mary than meets the eye. For all that sought her out in the West at the terminus of the Underground Railroad received her blessings and her favor. And freedom was theirs for the taking. John Brown, we remember him still here in Akron, Ohio, where he used to have his business located. John Brown lived up on the hill right across from Mr. Perkins and the Perkins Manshine. If you haven't been there yet, it's about time. But if you wait for a special day, you can also go to visit the monument to John Brown that's out in the woods behind the zoo. That's where you'll find a monument to freedom. Monuments to freedom for African slaves are far and few between. So you would do well to take the time out to check it out. John Brown. Queen Calafia, the Buffalo Soldiers, what do they all have in common? None of them was going to take any stuff because they were just too tough and life was just too rough. So they always had to strut their stuff, no matter what the consequences. John Brown didn't mind hanging around. If he could have a chance to free the enslaved Africans, to encourage them to rise up 
rise up for a better future in spite of a gloomy past. Rise up, says John Brown. Rise up. Rise up and take your freedom for yourselves. Rise up, he says to the enslaved Africans. Yes, we can. You know it every single day because John Brown had a plan. His plan did not work, but it did have an impact. It did have an effect. And black men did take up arms when they weren't slipping in the darkness, slipping away from their plantations to the westward terminus of the Underground Railroad, the House of Mystery, where Mary Ellen Pleasant was fully in charge, large and in charge. Mary Ellen Pleasant doing her thing, making that money, pretending to be eyes a bees a here's a boss, all the while carrying out her plan, taking the money in from providing services for her rich clientele and using that money for another purpose, repurposing the money. Yes, her as well, but she was not alone. She was not alone. There were others like Mary Ellen Pleasant, Martin R. Delaney, first black major in the U.S. Army, these are all people that we need to remember when we celebrate Juneteenth. Juneteenth, June 19, is not just a day where we don't have to go to work. As a matter of fact, it's a day where we should be working overtime because we're still on Freedom's Road. We're still sojourning, looking for that Freedom Day, we're still trying to reach that ultimate Juneteenth, that ultimate Jubilee right now, today. We can do it, but it's going to take work, it's going to take power, it's going to take muscle, and it's going to take a little moolah. We're going to need some economics in order to be able to do it. And yes, some lives will be lost because there is a cost. The price of freedom is high. The price of freedom is high. And sometimes we have to wear the mask and we put on that mask like Aunt Jemima. We put on that mask. We do what we have to do in order to bring the resources to us that we may need to extract and redirect some of those of us who are still suffering with those mental chains enslaving our minds. How do you free somebody's mind? That's the most difficult thing to do. That's something that you might have to think a little bit about. Mary Ellen Pleasant thought about it. Martin R. Delaney thought about it. John Brown thought about it. Queen Khalifa didn't think about it at all. She just did what she had to do. Now, if I'm mentioning some names you don't know, if I've said some things you've never heard, that just tells you how much work you have to do. When? Every single day, including Juneteenth. For we have others who need whose stories need to be told as well, like Alan Allensworth. Alan Allensworth, founder of the town of Allensworth, officer in the Union Army, doctor in the Union Army, built a whole town for just for black folks in California IA. We come right back to California IA. I know some of you live in California IA, but have no idea 
about the black history of California I-8. And you have to ask yourself, why don't you know that California I-8 is named after a black woman? Why don't you know about Alan Allen's work? Why have you never heard of Martin R. Delaney? And why is it that Mary Ellen Pleasant is still a mystery just as much as her house that sits on top of Knob Hill. Yes, they called her the queen of the voodoo, but the real voodoo, the, the real uh, practitioner of the voodoo is not Mary Ellen Pleasant, let me tell you. The real practitioner of the voodoo is whoever it is that left those stories out of our history books. The real practitioner of the voodoo is are the ones who left those stories out of our history books, left those stories out of our celebrations, left those stories out of the popular mind, left those stories out of the movies, because yes, black lives matter. Black lives matter every single day. Black lives matter. And yes, there were many Black Wall Streets, not just one, there were many. So it's time. Freedom time is now. Free your mind and everything else will follow through. Free your mind. Happy Juneteenth. We hope everybody has had a happy Juneteenth. And like the Sankofa bird, that you may have been able to return and fetch it, that which we left behind. Return and fetch it. Don't forget where we came from, who we came from, because all of that tells us, gives us a direction as to where we need to go by knowing how far we've come. Well, our presentation is over for today, and I hope that we've been able to shed a little, spread a little love in your life, encourage you to gain a little knowledge, to overcome a little strife in your life, because we offer, for you, we offer to you here some knowledge that you can't get in college. Absolutely. You can't get it in college. Can't touch that. Meanwhile, since um, it is 9.30, time is up, and all you little children need to do one little thing for me right now. You know what it is. Do, need I say it again? Well, okay, fine. I'll say it again. I need you to take your little head, put it on your little pillow, and put your head on your little pillow, on your little bed. Close those yeah, yeah eyes and wait for that sun to rise. And when you feel those sunbeams beaming down on your eyes, you'll know that it's time to rise and shine, oh, chillin' the mind. Rise and shine. For a new day has arisen and it is divine. In the meanwhile, all you adults out there, you got a job to do too. Number one, give us a like if you're watching on Facebook. Number two, give us a thumbs up if you're watching on the tube. And number three, go ahead and subscribe to the tubular Black Facts channel. The button is below. Bam. All you got to do is hit it and quit it. In the meantime, we're going to um, sign out, but we'll be black tomorrow at Noon. This is Doc Ock at noon and nine signing off. Peace with justice because anything else disgusts us. And we love being discussed. We just don't like being disgusted. Good night. <laughs>